aircraft and we're going to do the motor install. So this is the recommended motor. This is the Omega 72 gram 1100 kV motor. It's assembled like this with the black X-shaped mount on the back of the motor. This is the part of the motor that spins. The whole case in the front spins and the prop adapter bolts on the front and this is where our spinner and our prop will go. All right? It's going to bolt onto the aircraft like this. It bolts directly onto the firewall. Now, we include in the kit some mounting spacers, four little white plastic spacers, which are about a quarter of an inch long, just in case you have some strange setup. But if you use anything like the recommended motor or any of the other motors that are the same size and same shape as the recommended motor, like the E-Flight Park 480, the Torque 2830, the Hacker A3028S, or any of those recommended motors, you'll bolt them directly to the firewall. Okay, so we're going to do that now. We're going to use the four long black three millimeter allen screws included in the kit okay so you can drive these with a 2.5 millimeter or a 330 seconds hex wrench so we're going to use the proper 2.5 millimeter although a 330 seconds is close enough I'm going to put the motor wires out to the side and I'll show you why in a second while we put the motor wires to the side and the blind nuts are already pre-installed in the firewall so this just screws right in okay and we'll install all four screws and we'll tighten them down all right so we've tightened these down okay got these tightened down. Now, if you're familiar with Loctite and you want to use Loctite on these screws, the correct color of Loctite to use on these screws is blue, not red, blue. We're not using Loctite on this install because if you get the right amount of torque, just give it a good crank down with your hex driver tool. These don't tend to loosen and you don't specifically need Loctite on these, but if you're in the habit of Loctiting your screws, blue is fine on this application. Okay, we're going to show you a design feature of the airplane, which, if you're not used to balsa airplanes, you might not recognize. It's called right thrust. If you look at the motor box from the top, you'll see that the firewall is not straight with the long axis of the aircraft. It's actually canted off to the right. Okay, this is by design, and this is to counteract the effect of the spinning prop. The prop spins one direction. It tends to turn the airplane to the left. We give the airplane a little right thrust. You'll find this on virtually every balsa aerobatic airplane in the world. A lot of sport planes, most scale planes will have right thrust. This takes some load off of your left thumb in flight. The airplane doesn't need as much right rudder attention through various maneuvers and it tends to track straighter this way. So, right thrust. This is exactly as designed. Some people are not used to this. When they see it for the first time, they think that there's something wrong with the airplane. Nope. All aerobatic airplanes have it. Okay, now we have our motor installed onto the front of our airplane with our four bolts and we have some excess bolt threads sticking inside of the airplane and like on all brushless outrunner motors we're going to have a little bit of excess shafting sticking inside the motor going inside here and so your Li-Poly battery is going to be velcroed down to the battery tray here and if you were to have a front end impact in a crash then your battery can slide forward and could potentially be damaged by the shaft of the screws. I'll show you a little trick to prevent that. So this is just a piece of foam. It can be foam from anything, just packaging foam from something or a stack of chinet plates. It doesn't really matter. This is a piece of foam that I got from some camera packaging and I cut a square two and a half by two and a quarter and we just shove it in the motor box and shove it up in there and we can put a drop of glue on it if we like and if we ever have a frontal clash this can protect our Li Poly pack. If you never crash, you won't need it, but this airplane is designed for guys that are getting into 3D and getting used to 3D, so a little piece of foam like this might save you a Li Poly pack or two. All right? So that's a trick you can do if you like. All right, so now we're going to talk about the speed control. All right, so this is a typical 40 amp speed control. You can get speed control units like this from Hacker or from Airboss or from Mystery or from a variety of companies. I'll show you something you're going to want to have, however. It says SBEC, and that means switching battery eliminator circuit. 
and that's the good kind of battery eliminator circuit and I'll show you what that chip looks like on the back of the speed control right there that's a switching BEC chip and you'll notice that it's pretty big and it stands up off of the back side of the ESC okay and you can you can feel it under the shrink wrap and it's actually got a little circle inscribed in it because there's actually a coil of wire inside there you really want to have that on whatever ESC you choose I would actually my opinion that's a make it or break it for an ESC uh, on a plane this size and larger I'm only going to use an ESC that has an SBEC or a switching battery eliminator circuit on board because this is what powers your radio and your servos when you're flying battery voltage comes in here and this chip converts it to five and a half volts which goes out through your red wire to your radio I really like the switching style of BEC it's very effective and very reliable it's only one I want to use, so I highly recommend that you get one, a good one, like the Airboss or the Hacker that has the switching style of BEC. All right? Our speed control into our edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the radio connection wire through the airframe, and we're going to run the ESC with your battery plug inside the airplane as shown and your ESC can ride right here inside the F1 former. That's a good spot for it. And we're going to hook it up to the motor with the three wires. All right. Now you'll notice that these wires are not color coded. Okay. And most brands of ESC and motor will not have color codings because there's no way to tell beforehand whether you have the right connections or not. The only way to tell is to plug it in and run it. We want it to spin this direction. We want it to spin, if you look at it from the front of the airplane, we want it to spin counterclockwise. That's because our props bite the air that direction. Okay, this is the front of the prop. It's got the numbers on it right here and right here. So we want this prop to spin this direction. If the, we started the motor and it were to spin the other direction like this, the way we reverse any brushless motor system is take two of these connections and switch them okay then it will rotate the opposite direction you can do that on any brushless three wire system okay so all we're going to do now is just use some zip ties tie these wires up to the motor box i'll put a zip tie here in the back and i'll tie the battery wire down and our esc will ride right here alongside the motor box it's a good spot for it it has plenty of cooling air flowing past it okay Okay, so we've tied the speed control off to the motor box in the front and in the back with a couple of hardware store zip ties, All right, just little nylon zip ties. Power system is installed. 